All right, guys, what's up? This is Kobe Cheese, and this is going to be game number two of the WCG qualifier matches that were sent in to me by uh, Don't Mash Me. He's going to be playing with this team of himself, 2 8, Jat, Vigos, and Crispy. Now, uh, the team that he's against, now, again, keep in mind, these are not like actual teams that you see in Go for Law matches and Premier Leagues and stuff like that. It's an actual WCG that is a qualifier match taking place. Anyhow, they have taken a little bit of different champions from the last match. Jat is on Nocturne once again, so we have that. And then instead of the enemy team having a Janna, looks like this time they've decided to pick up Janna for themselves. Interesting thing though is that we have a Karma. You don't see a lot of Karma in the competitive play from what I've seen, but I will say that uh, Chu8 is one of those players who got to rank one playing Maokai and Karma. So if anyone's qualified to play Karma, I would say it would be Chu8, and we'll see how it goes. I'm assuming that he's going to be soloing probably in the mid lane. We're going to have Crispy up top on um, on the little alligator guy here, you know, Mr. Outback. Well, he's not on the Outback skin, but I do like that Outback skin. I just like to call him the Outback Gator. I think that's I think that just needs to be his default skin. And, of course, Jack going to be jungling once again. Uh, last game, they actually tried to counter jungle their um, their Jat just a little bit. And Jat will slow down a little bit. Didn't really hurt him that much. So I'm guessing that that could potentially happen again. Lots of pings going out. I think they're trying to... I don't know if they're just saying, hey, we need to look out in these different directions. Don't don't face check the bushes, etc. They want to make sure that they win this game. If they do win this one, then they're going to go ahead and take the, sit, the, the set. Sorry, I was trying to say series and set at the same time. And if they don't win, then they're going to have to go on to a game number three. We'll see how that goes. Now, there we go. There's a CV showing the enemy team. Of course, we're going to have a jungle Alistar this time. Instead of last game, we had the laning Alistar. Jungle Alistar is actually kind of scary. His ganks are really good. He can come around. Let's say he comes on 2-8. He can come around behind here. Boom. Punt her right into Galio. And then as she tries to run away, he can knock her up in the air. So it's kind of like a double stun, only at level 2. And that's really strong. He can pick up that blue buff and go gank either one of these lanes. Yururu here on the Galio. Galio can be really strong as a laning champion. Due to the fact that he can just destroy those creeps really easily, he can put down some decent poke and his shield keeps him alive very nicely. It uh, reduces the amount of damage taken by a considerable amount and every time he takes a hit he'll heal himself for a little bit as well. Uh, on the other hand, um, Karma, while mostly looked at as a support champion, is a very strong early game solo champion. She can do a considerable amount of damage with her shield and then her little uh, cone damage spell. Her cone damage spell not only does damage to enemy champions and creeps, but it'll also heal her for a small amount as well. So we'll see how this goes. A little bit of uh, harassment going back down, but let's take a uh, take a look at the bottom lane. We've got the Janna and Caitlyn lane. Of course, I did mention last game that whenever you play as a ranged carry with a Janna, you're always going to be picking up those boosts and three health potions. That does remain true here. You won't want to pick up something that's going to force you out of the lane quickly, especially against a Taric. If he gets that stun off on a, on a say don't mash me and Nick's brother on Corky jumps in, that's going to be a large amount of damage that's going to be very hard to come back from. So they're going to have to be really careful for that and really watch for that stun from j -Pock if they want to stay alive. And there was a little bit of uh, vision going down. We saw that Alistar, that was a nice CV, perfect timing. Looks like uh, looks like Janna just had it in her mind. She was like, I know that he's going to be ganking a lane pretty soon. I don't know what Crispy was thinking. He went right back up and there. He's going to get first blood. Yes, he does. I guess he thought that Alistar decided to go towards the middle lane, but he made a big mistake of just kind of sticking around that area. Alistar, really smart, ran right back up there after that CV wore off and was able to pick up that first blood. That's going to be really bad. And uh, so he's going to lose a couple of creeps here, give the brand a little bit of free farm time as well on his own. And that's just going to make it harder for them in the early game. We'll see how they pick up from that. Now down here, I'm curious, we already have a ward, so I'm assuming that Domashimi wants to just continually push this lane down. He does have the presence to do that. He can place down these traps to keep this bush right here from being invaded. That's the cool thing about Caitlyn is you can put that that ward, or sorry, that trap right there at the edge of that bush. And a lot of people like to just run into that bush to try and zone you. And that trap's going to force that to be less of a possibility. And now she can do the same thing, put a 
put a trap in this bush if she likes or she can put a bush over here on this area and just kind of really limit the options of where these guys can walk in to fight Domashmi. And with that long range, she can keep shooting out that Q and put some pretty good harass and poke down onto Nick's brother. Now down here, it looks like there is a little bit of a, a gank attempt going down onto Chu8. Oh no, it looks like Crispy might have actually disconnected. That could be bad for him. Hopefully he comes back into the game before too long and does not lose too much experience. But that's going to be a pretty uh, detrimental loss for Domashmi's team here. And here we go. There's the All-Star game coming around behind. And there's the double stun and knock up. And the combo from Galio picks up a kill on the Chu8. Really bad early game so far. It's not looking good for Domashmi's team. Regardless of how well they're doing on bottom, the top lane and the middle lane are now losing. He's going to lose two waves of creeps here from getting ganked. Again, Alistar. Well, that's just really one wave. Sorry. Um, but again, that Alistar gank is so strong. It's so scary. If that catches you out of position, then you're very, very likely to get killed from that. No problem. Still haven't seen Crispy come back yet. I'm not sure if he had an internet outage or what. Let's just see. There he goes. He has reconnected now. He's back in the game. Let's see what kind of disadvantage that puts him at. So we've got the top lane level 5 now. Crispy's only at level 3 with a 33. So he's about 20 uh, creep kills behind. That's about a champion kill. In addition to actually dying himself up at the top in the first place. That's not good. And both kills have gone to that Alistar. I'm curious if the Alistar is going to be going tanky or if he's going to go for some AP items. If Alistar gets enough kills in the jungle or as a roamer, he can build AP and become another, basically another carry for the game. And there you go. Looks like 2A gets caught once again with another stun and an ultimate coming down from the Galio, but he's not going to go down. He might just get away. Yes, he does. That shield is so strong on Karma. He's able to keep himself alive regardless of all the ultimates used. And oh no, bottom lane does get caught though. The Janna. Nice job there from Alistar coming in with the gank, knocks up Janna, and big damage with a stun Alistar. There's no way you're going to get out of that. That's a great gank there. Alistar doing work on the enemy team here. Don't mash me, he's having a lot of trouble in this one. He's, uh, he's pretty much the only one who has not died in this game, him and Nocturne, I suppose. So right now it's looking really, really bad for them. They're going to have to farm this up and potentially win a fight, I don't know, at Dragon or something like that, or they're going to be behind this entire game. It's going to be so hard to come back from. And that was a nice job on him, last hitting all those minions. He didn't lose anything to that tower. Galio, right around level 5, is able to take out pretty much the back wave minions by using his Q and E combo. He's now level 7, and he picked up that Philosopher's Stone and Chalice of Harmony. One thing about the Galio in lane is that he runs out of mana so fast. So picking up that Chalice and Philosopher's Stone is going to make it so that he can just continue spamming those spells and stick inside that lane for not too long. They're trying to counter jungle this blue buff, but you have to be careful because Yuru is coming in. He could potentially kill them if he has his ultimate up. I don't know if it's actually off cooldown yet. But there we go, 2-8 trying to just do a little bit of poke and harass, keep them low, and they're going to back off of that, give them that blue buff. I don't think they're going to be able to defend that at all. And by defend, I don't think they're going to be able to take that on the offensive at all. 2 going to be doing a little bit of poke on Yuru. He, sh he should be fine, though. He's about half HP from what I can tell. And Crispy, let's see if he can catch up. I don't know, it's going to be very difficult, especially against a brand. 55 CS versus 28, and about a level or two behind. Yeah, two levels behind. That's going to be difficult because Crispy wants to run up and attack those minions, but Brand's just going to sit there and lay down his pillar of flame, and if Crispy sticks around, he's just going to continually lose his health. Cool thing about the Gator is that he can just get his health back from some of his abilities, and that's what he's going to have to rely on to sustain himself in the lane there. Don't match me coming back to the lane. What does he have? He's got a... So he went straight for the BF sword. He was able to farm up enough. He didn't even need to go for that early game, you know, stack Dorans like you see on some carries. He was able to just farm straight up, picked up the boots, got a BF sword, and he's going to be going into most likely an Infinity Edge really quick on this. And he's going he's gonna to definitely be a factor. If they can get into a team fight and he can do quite a bit of damage, that's going to be good stuff. For them, and that's what they're gonna have to rely on is Caitlyn getting strong because she's the only one who's not having a huge issue in the lane right now. As far as she is concerned, um, she's actually a slight bit a bit uh, above the Corky. 
Although the Corky does have one kill, so that actually technically sets him ahead. That's going to be about 17 creep kills advantage from that kill. Now, a little bit of counter juggle going on. The Alistar did want to pick up the blue buff, but noticing the Jat was coming in, he decided to back off. Smart on his part, he already does have his own blue. He doesn't want to lose that, as well as the blue buff that he was going for in the first place. Jet's going to pick that up, no problem. We haven't really seen many uh, successful ganks from Jat this game. He was doing really well last game, but um, in his defense, both of the uh, top and the middle lane kind of died on their own before he can do anything about it, so not much he could have done anyways. There we go. Nice trap there, detecting JPAG. Just, uh, I guess he came in there to just put down a ward or something. He potentially either put a ward or was looking to come around behind for a stun. And they're pinging here. There could be... Yeah, there we go. There's Galio. I guess uh, him and potentially Alistar were in there doing some counter juggling. Tweet with Boots of Lucidity and a little bit of a gank from Jet. I don't know if they're going to be able to pick Yuru here. His shield goes down. He is in the tower range. They don't want to get in the tower range because if he taunts them, that's going to be lights out with the tower hitting them plus his ultimate, making him take about 50% reduced damage while he's in that taunt state. And that's, that's pretty heavy. Here you go. Lots of damage going on. Don't mash me. I don't think he's going to be able to take out Nick's brother, though. Nick's brother is easily able to just sit there and withstand that. The cool thing about Alist or sorry, uh, Tarek is he's got this little this little crystal R around him. It adds a significant amount of armor to anyone close by. And so if Don't Mash Me tries to put down some harass on Nick's brother, he's going to be taking considerably less damage by having uh, just having Tarek stand in the general vicinity. And then Tarek can just sit there and heal him back up. And so that makes it a really strong lane combination. Tarek is probably one of the stronger supports in the game right now. You usually see Tarek in most most of the uh, lane comps these days just because of how strong he can be. There's that trap kind of trying to keep them from being zoned out. He's just going to sit there and walk over each of them to, to, to try and get rid of them but that does give them that vision of him so it's less likely that they will get zoned from those. There you go. He set on that last little trap and Domash is going to have to refresh those at this point. There we go. Nice ward placement, detecting a gank coming in from this Alistar. They're going to have to sit here and hug this tower. Luckily, Jat's there. He's waiting for the counter gank, and he could potentially catch Alistar, but it's going to be dangerous if he gets knocked up here. Boom! Both of them get knocked up. That was a great knockout by the Alistar. Nice stun going down to Janna. Lots of damage going down, and he's going to pick up the kill. Great job by Nick's brother, and that was a perfect combination of Alistar, stun, plus the Tarek stun, and they're going to take that out. Jet does want to go in for a kill. He's getting really greedy here, but he's going to come in and maybe get knocked out by Onion Bagel. Is Jet going to go down if there's a rocket? It's going to go down. Jet goes down, and Alistar picks up the double buff. That's really bad for the team. Karma coming in here, trying to pick up. He's going to get Nick's brother maybe with an Ignite. Yes, he does, and there goes the ultimate on the Onion Bagel. Not enough to kill him, though. Are they going to be able to pick up Alistar or Tarek? I don't know. There's the flash. It's going to be really close. Don't mash me. He doesn't have a lot of mana or health. He can't tower dive this. Oh, my God, and here comes Galio with the ultimate taking out. Don't mash me, and Don't mash me goes down to eight. He's going to have to get out of there quickly he's gonna get slowed right here and I don't know if he's gonna be able to make it out of this one alive there's the Q he's no health no mana and onion bagel pick up the kill wow what an engagement that was sick don't imagine his team just gets completely demolished there and they're gonna have to be careful because I don't think Janna can defend this tower they can potentially just sit here and knock it down but then again they don't really have a lot of damage there uh, Corky did go down so they're just gonna back off heal up and get their items but that's a big advantage one kill to seven Nice job on their part. So right now, Don't Mashmi's team is so far behind and not only creep score, kills, and I don't even know if they've gotten Dragon yet because that ward is down. I don't think they've gotten the Dragon yet, to be honest. But uh, that could potentially be the next objective that we're going to see taken from them. And uh, luckily, though, no towers have fallen. If they can kind of hold those towers and maybe, you know, find a fight that they can actually come back from. This might turn in their favor, but at this point, I'm a little worried for these guys because uh, right now, the uh, the team that they're facing against is really, really strong. That combination of Alistar, knockup, plus his, his little uh, headbutt, and then Tarek stun, and then the Galio ultimate. I mean, it's a really it's really difficult for them to actually find a position where they can do good damage without just being completely stunned or uh, CC'd in some form or another. CC being crap control for those of you asking. All right, and here we go. Don't imagine he's just gonna continue farming up here as he needs to do. Let's see if he's actually behind yet. Yeah, he's actually uh, Corky caught up. He's he's now basically straight up even, uh, except for the fact that he has two kills. Corky gonna be going straight for that in Trinity Force rather than picking up a mana moon on him or mana moon a whatever you want to call it 
which is the uh, two standard items you usually see on Corky. Either oh no, there's a stun going down. No mash me. He actually dodges that uh, missile and then misses his own Q, but he loses that engagement. That sheen uh, on the Corky allows Corky to do so much extra damage. Each time he shoots a spell, he will uh, hit for about, I think, 100% extra on his base damage. Pretty, uh, pretty heavy. And there we go. Galio, uh, he's going to have to be careful. 2-8 comes in here. He's going to get knocked in the wall. That acts as a little bit of a stun. Knock up there. And boom, Q and E combo. Boom, lots of damage. <laughs> he's going to have to be careful. He gets stuck in one of the Galio ults plus a knockout from Alistar. That could be a lot of time for him. But at the same time, he does have that heal. He can sustain himself as long as he plays it safe and sits in the back. He's going to go a little bit tanky here, it looks. Giant Spell. Amplifying Tomes is going to pick up the Riley's Crystal Scepter so that every time he casts a spell, the enemy will be slowed and it's going to be harder for them to escape or he can just kind of kite around with that slow and that shield and things like that. So far, been a pretty exciting game. Lots of action going down in all the lanes. And I think that uh, right now, Nick's brother and his team just needs to continue to... Uh, do what they're doing, just poke down the towers and put pressure. Alistar has been a huge, huge factor. I think in both games, Alistar has seen numerous nerfs in previous patches, but he continues to be one of the top champions. As I've seen in most all of my games, you get a nice little Alistar knock-up, headbutt combo, and that's going to turn the tide of a battle very well. The whole time though up top, Brand just been farming away and he's going to be a huge factor. Brand with lots of farm and damage, he's going to be really difficult to deal with. He's going to be putting out big, big AoE damage in addition to what not only Galileo is doing, but the Corky can even do a little bit of AoE himself with his rocket missiles and his Gatling gun, which just strips out the armor from the enemy team. And stripping out armor, yeah, that's going to pretty much just help him. Everybody else is mostly magic on their team. Yeah, there we go. Looks like, as I was talking about earlier, the Alistar is going to be picking up a, a, an AP build. He's going to be going all ability power, so he's not going to be going tanky. He just wants to do as much damage as possible and kill Domashmi's team very quickly. And I really like that. That's the, that's the build I prefer to see on Alistars, but sometimes you see the Alistars go for more of the utility where they'll pick up a, you know, maybe an Aegis or some more tanky items. But with that ultimate on Alistar, I mean, that, that blocks about 50% uh, damage, I think 75% at least... Uh, I, should, I think they nerfed it down to 50%, maybe at max range. I can't remember the exact number on it, but they did nerf that in the last patch. <sighs> Alright, so let's see. Right now, creep score. Corky has now moved ahead of that Caitlyn. Galio doing an amazing job. Up top, a little bit of engage, and by top I mean middle here. I don't think there's really going to be any kills here unless it's assisted by a gank, which there it is. There's a the gank, there's the flash and the knockout, but another flash from 2-8 allows him to escape that knockout from Alistar. So that's two flashes used. Probably going to make it easier for 2-8 to be ganked in the future, though. Alistar technically just has to loop right back around and do the same thing. But I think that 2-8 is probably going to play this a little bit safer. He might want to get some wards to defend that he actually has no room for wards. He's trying to build up that Riley Scepter, just didn't have enough money to do it yet. Here you go, Brand almost completing that. And again, we see the uh, standard Brand build, two Dorian's ring into a death cap. That's basically what you see these days. You generally don't see that Rod of Ages used too much anymore. Uh, since it is, you know, it, it is really easy to stay out of danger on an AP carry such as Brand, where you can just stay way far in the back. He's got such huge range. It's really difficult to uh, to get caught unless you just walk into a bush or put yourself in a bad position. Someone flashes and catches you, you know, that sort of thing. The whole goal of being an AP carry is to just burst somebody down very quickly and do lots of damage to them. Brand doing a great job of zoning Crispy. Crispy's only way to get farm here is to run up in melee range, and Brand knows this. He's going to sit there and poke him down if he tries to get anywhere near. And if Crispy tries to jump in and initiate onto... Uh, honestly, the brand brand's just gonna nuke him right in the face. Hadouken stun him in the face, and he's not gonna be able to do anything about it. Here you go, Jet, trying to do a little bit of damage to Galio, realizing that's not gonna be possible. Galio is a little bit too tanky, especially with that shield. And there goes the dragon. Here's the control from Dragon. I think that uh, I think that Nick's brother and his team are just whoo. They're just controlling this game left and right, all lanes. Even though no towers have been taken, they control all these lanes regardless. They are going to out-farm. Chuey's not even able to farm up as much as you like. He's got 150, but that still cannot match the Galio. So, I mean, a, a farmed-up Karma is nice. I just don't see it being as 
as deadly as a farmed up Galio. Galio that is unkillable and does a lot of damage, and it's pretty difficult to deal with. Especially with the fact that Galio did build a Gulper 5 on him. Not only does he have more farm, he's gonna have that Gulper 5. Oh, here's an ultimate, probably going to catch JPAC, but it's a little bit too late because he's already in that tower range. You gotta be careful he would get stunned there, so that was kind of a waste of all. There's the teleport from Galio! He's gonna go in for the ultimate, he jumps onto the- Oh my god, he's gonna take on both of them! No, he doesn't! Don't match me, he uses the flash. And I think he will make it out. He's going to be careful, though. If he gets stunned, he's going to go down. 2-8 is in a bad position as well. I don't think he can get away. He gets exhausted. Oh, no. This is bad. Oh, no. Very bad. Nick's brother is now up. He can potentially push this tower. Don't match me. Can't stay around. He has to go back to heal up. And mid tower is going to be destroyed by Onion Bagel over here on Alistar. Yuru are going to help out. At the same time, Brand is pushing top. That tower is low. And now bottom is even getting low. I think we could potentially see all three towers go down here very shortly if they don't get back in time. Yeah, I think so. We'll see if he's going to turn on his ultimate here. So there's middle lane. Yep, LSR was able to take out middle lane. And j -Pock turning on his ultimate. By the way, uh, Tarek ultimate will actually give about... 50 attack damage to himself and around, I think, half of that to anyone next to him. So, Corky already doing lots of damage, and then he turns on that ultimate, doing an extra 25 damage, and that's just going to make a, a huge difference. And obviously, they took out all three towers. Big, big engage. Dragon lost. They're eight kills down, three towers down. I don't know what Domashmi team can do at this point. This is just going to be a landslide loss for them. So many bad positioning mistakes, and that teleport on Galio has been detrimental. He's gotten, I think, two great, great engages by teleporting in, throwing down the ultimate, and just destroying everybody. Okay, well, let's see if it settles down a bit. I don't know what we're going to see from Domashmi's team. I don't know what they can do. They're not strong enough to win a team battle at this point. I think the only option left for them is to... Um, I don't know. Just ward up and hope for the best. You know, they're going to have to catch somebody in a spot that they can kill them off quickly. The only thing is that they don't have a lot of burst. They have no real AP carry. Whereas... Uh, Yururu's team over here, they've got uh, Brand who can boom, they can nuke you down really quickly. Alistar is actually kind of nuky. He's about to have his death cap built up. That's a pretty big nuke damage. And even Corky has quite a bit of nuke. Corky's like a hybrid between a, excuse me, a mage and an attack damage carry. Early to mid game, he does more bursty damage. And then late game, after he builds up, uh, you know, a couple of attack damage items, he, he becomes a really good. Uh, you know, attack damage carry where you can just sit there and hit you really hard attack after attack. So, on Domanishimi's team, they've got more of a, I don't know, kind of like a kite team. Crispy can sit there in the middle and do some sustained damage. They've got some sustained damage, but no real burst. And I think that's hurting them a lot because they get CC'd. You can't really sustain damage if you're CC'd the whole time. That's the main thing. Galio keeps you from doing your abilities. Uh, J-Pox going to stun one of them, keep them from doing their abilities. The amount of CC from Alistar alone is ridiculous. And down bottom, there's a lot of damage going down. Don't match me taking big damage, but he uses his exhaust. Nice timing there. Oh, man. He tried to get one more rocket. Corky was not able to get the kill, though. He does go down. Nice job there on that exhaust. Corky probably... Um, overvalued his items versus Mashmi, and uh, especially since Janna was there. I think if Janna wasn't there, he probably would have got that kill on Mashmi, but that is not the case, and I just keep hitting right click for some reason. Let me. There we go. Uh, back to normal. <laughs> Alright, so, anyways, the Galio now is super strong, built up AP items so that he can be even burstier. He's like, hey guys, I don't even need to be super tanky because these guys, they can't do anything to me. They don't have burst. Why do I need all that tanky stuff? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna blow you up. And that's what he's been doing. All he's got to do is shield himself, pop that ultimate, and boom. Look at that. Look at how much damage just went down onto Caitlyn. Here goes the engage, trying to take out the Alistar. Is he going to be able to get out? I think so. He might have just wasted it there. If he uses an ultimate here, he could actually potentially kill Jet. Maybe not, though. That would have been a bad idea. There are four people there, so I probably wouldn't have done that either. 
And this could be the first tower for... Don't mash me if they're lucky. But lots of damage going down. Corey is able to push them down quite heavily. And oh, nice. Alistair comes around. He's able to pick up the kill and don't mash me. And he has no health. And he still gets away again. Alistar just making work of this. I have to say, MVP just might be Alistar this game. Even though, I mean, everyone else is doing really great. But God, he still comes around, pushes him into the wall. And this is so bad for Don't Mash Me. I don't know what they're going to do. 24 minutes. This game is a landslide loss for them. I don't see this going any other way except for a loss. And, yeah, Crispy has a teleport back. He's going to try and defend this tower. I don't think he's even going to be able to defend it. He should have technically just went up and tried to push the top. I don't really... Actually, honestly, I don't know what else he could have done. I mean... I mean, he's going to come in here. This tower's going to be dead before he even gets there. Yeah, this is really bad. Domashmi does have the Infinity Edge built up and Zerk agrees. But if you compare that to what the Corky has, he's already got a Trinity and a BF Sword as well as uh, Berserk Greaves. Pretty heavy. Pretty heavy. Crispy, not really big on damage. He's more of a tanky person right now. So he's not even going to be that threatening. I think they could be doing... Yeah, they just uh, they just CV'd Baron. They're not there. They potentially went and took the dragon or went back. And then they're going to go for maybe some Baron control. We'll see what they're deciding to do. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure they just went back and bought some items. After that push, I'm guessing they had a little bit of extra gold stored up. The brand now with a Revenant's Death Cap and going for the Blasting Wand... Probably going for Riley's. Cool thing about Brand is that his passive ticks. Oh no! Boom! Big damage going down, not only from uh, Yururu's Q, which does slow you, by the way, um, but he also got hit by a rocket from Quirky. That's a huge poke. So here's the thing this team not only has lots of burst potential, but they have great poke. Galio is one of those tanks that can sit there and poke you from a great range, take off your health slowly over time. And you do that with Corky. Corky's got great range on his missiles. He can poke you down. And there is no heals on this team, only Janna shields. So even if they were to get into a position where everybody is just defending at the tower, I think that this team would still be able to eventually poke them down low enough that they can dive or force them back and then they would take that tower. Whereas the only source of poke here is really Domashmi's Q. And that's really it. They tried to go for that Baron. That was kind of a, uh, you know, uh, desperate effort to get it. They saw everybody moving towards that Dragon area. They said, hey guys, let's try out this Baron. But nope, not going to happen. They were, they were there to back that off just in time. <clears throat> so not only 11 kill lead, but they have uh, all of these towers... And I, and I speak about this a lot, but that's that's a huge, significant XP and gold advantage. Now, this middle tower is going to go down. I don't think that they can even really stop them if they engage at this point. So, boom, nice little gauge from the Alistar. Is this going to be engaged on the rest of the team, or are they going to back off? I think they're going to back off, and they're just going to pick up this inhibitor. This inhibitor will go down, so they're going to be spawning some super creeps. Super creeps going to be coming in here. And not only uh, super creeps, but it makes the rest of the champions... Oh, no, there's a little bit of a gauge where it goes down. I think they're trying to make... Make this their last ditch effort. I think they're going to pretty much give it up after this. Either that or they're going to lose their Nexus anyways. There's no way they can defend this. Corky does so much damage to those towers. Every time he uses an ability, he's going to do even more damage. 125%, I believe, on his uh, next attack. There we go. Alistair trying to go in for another kill. Don't match me. They're going to pick up. Don't match me. And that's just a landslide victory. Great job. Great game number two for... Uh, Jay Pock and his brother and his team. So this is going to be going to game number three. We'll see who is going to be moving on to, uh, you know, compete potentially in the WCG and game number three. So check it out on my channel, guys. This is Kobe Cheese. See you around for the next one. Peace out.